probably show you my tattoo because I didn't show it yesterday because it was um, my camera died obviously it's really dark because it's a fresh tattoo it's also really red and a little bit swollen just keep that in mind a like French food setting in a picture frame yo I've been getting really good at whistling That's new. That's new for me. I'm in a weird mood right now because Cece's out of town, so I'm like alone. So I've been alone all day. I've seen nobody. So that's a little weird for me right now. I'm just like surrounded by people all the time. Okay, so things I've learned in France so far. I leave Thursday of next week. Today's Saturday. So I only got a couple days left. Um, I feel like I'm not ready to leave. Like I love Paris so much. I loved being in the city. I love the food, the art, the architecture. Like I just, the fashion, like just, I don't know. I loved everything about being here. When I was about to leave Ireland, I was like, okay. Like, I feel like I've had enough of Ireland. Like, you know, there wasn't that, that much to do, but like, I don't want to leave Paris. Like, the first thing that I've learned is that the whole French stereotype, I don't know if this is a stereotype everywhere, but like, in America anyway, like there's a stereotype that French people are rude or Parisians are rude. And I just simply don't think that's true. I think that that's probably a result of people traveling here and then thinking they're entitled and not trying to learn about a different culture. But from my experience, people are so nice. Really honestly, just like if you're not an asshole, people won't treat you like an asshole. So I don't know. I've had great experiences. Literally like the first week we got here, we were figuring out the metro and this random lady was like, oh, don't worry. And she just pulled out her wallet and just like gave me and my friends just metro tickets, like for free. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like um, another thing I learned is maybe you'll think this is boring, but I thought this was so interesting. You know, in, in France, they eat like snails and frogs and the rest of the world is kind of like, ew, gross, like why are you eating that? Like, but here it's like a delicacy. Obviously I'm not eating this because I don't eat animals, but I learned the reason that they eat snails and frogs is because during the French Revolution, if you didn't own land or you weren't upper class, you weren't allowed to hunt. So if you needed to feed your family, you didn't have enough crops or money or anything, you legally could not go out and hunt so to get around this, people would just go outside and pick up snails and pick up frogs and cook them. And that's why they eat snails now. You might not care. And that's okay. Um, the next thing I learned is something that I sort of already knew, but my friend Cece, my roommate, is like really, really mad about this. But she loves lemonade. She's like obsessed with lemonade. Lemonade like we know it in the States is not like lemonade here like if you order a lemonade they will probably bring you um sprite or maybe like water with lemon or lemon soda instead of ordering a lemonade you have to order lemon juice can't remember how to say it in french but it's like citron press or something like that on a menu and then they'll bring you out like glass half full of lemon juice and then water and then you make your own lemonade you mix it with water and sugar and stuff okay the next thing i learned is more about me i think so when i first came here i was like oh my god i'm not cool enough to be here walking around i was like everybody looks so cool and artsy and fashionable and confident i don't know and i was like i'm not cool enough to be here a couple weeks in i sort of was like i sort of just like gave up on trying to be cool and just sort of just like told myself that I was cool enough. I wasn't trying to be a cool French person. I was just trying to be a cool me person. I don't know. I just felt cooler. So I think that the whole cool French people is like definitely a mindset. Getting that mindset is easier said than done. But it's also kind of just like, I don't know, just like decide that you're cool. And then, and then you are. Uh, the next thing I have written on my list is that I should be able to speak French. I wish I did, but like, honestly, pointing is very effective. Having a language barrier has made me realize how well humans can communicate without words. 
I was in Paris for Halloween, I realized and learned that just Halloween is not a very, very big thing in France. I think uh, somebody told me that kids didn't start going trick-or-treating until like the 90s or something like that. They still have like Halloween candy and like Halloween decorations because everyone's trying to make money. Bars and clubs will have like Halloween nights for actual French people. Not that many people are wearing costumes. It's not, it's not like it is in America. Which I kind of like, cause I don't really like Halloween. I realize how privileged this sounds, what the next thing I have written down. So maybe I just won't say it. No, 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 I'll say it. Cause it was a thought that I had. So the Lou, like low key sucks. Um, and I say that only because I've been so many times now for my class we go multiple times a week like i find art history and art and all of that like so interesting like, and i realized that about myself because I've, since taking this class but the louvre itself is so popular it's so massive it's so crowded there's so many kids that are screaming don't really understand why that many young kids are in the louvre i just don't think they're getting that much out of it that's a personal opinion and I say this as a person that went to the Louvre as a young kid like I went to the Louvre when I was seven years old and I don't remember anything about it so another thing like going off of that is that like when you go to museums or you go to galleries or whatever the most famous art that's there is not always the coolest art like I think that people tend to just like only look at the things that are famous or the most expensive it's your own interpretation of it like it's more interesting to like for you to decide what you think about all the paintings than just like walking directly up to van gogh's self-portrait and taking a picture of it and then leaving the orsay museum you know that's the equivalent of going into the louvre and taking a picture of the Mona Lisa and then leaving. And if you're going to the museums and you're only looking at the famous paintings and you're not trying to find other things that you think are interesting or learn about, then you're basically not even going. So, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, I'm having way too many hot takes right now. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, Google Maps is way better than Apple Maps. And I know I'm not the only one that has this opinion because when I first came to Europe, everyone that I, in my program was like, yo, Google Maps is way better. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like I'm sticking with Apple Maps. Like, what are you talking about? And I've always roasted my mom for using Google Maps because I thought it was stupid. Like Google Maps is more accurate with like when things open and close. Here I have, if you're planning on studying abroad or you're planning on going on a long, long trip, bring more socks than you think you need. Like it's okay to overpack socks. Like a shit ton of socks. Like, oh my God. I thought I brought enough socks. I didn't. Socks are the first thing I run out of when I, before I have to do laundry. I never have enough socks. I'm always having to wear dirty socks. Like the other weekend, Hey. That's hey. my biggest fan. Yes. I do have post notifications on. Dead homies, y'all gotta turn it on. <laughs> oh right now. shit. Do you actually have post notifications on for me? I, no, I'm not gonna lie.